dawn at Dinevor Park. Situated in Llandailo, just west of the Brecon Beacons, it's the only Parkland National Nature Reserve in Wales. The heartland of Welsh defiance against English rule. Perched menacingly on the tops of high ground lay evidence of a long gone conflict. The antagonists now long buried, and the sound of clashing swords faded into history. The old castle still stands overlooking the vast terrain as it slopes down into the level fields of the Towy floodplain. The landscape provides an ideal environment for some of Britain's best-loved wildlife. You never know what you might see. But the combination of open grassland and controlled wilderness provides an ideal habitat for one of Britain's most intriguing mammals. Fallow deer. Not native to the British Isles, fallow deer were introduced by the Normans in the 11th century and have since become one of the most widespread species of deer in the UK. During the 18th century and earlier, it was fashionable to have your own herd of fallow deer and over 700 country parks had them. It's late September, and in a few short months, the fallow bucks' enormous shovel-like antlers have completely regrown, and its velvety skin has shed, leaving a hardened, dead bone crown behind. The big males are now sexually active, and have grown in size and muscle mass. Now sporting a broader stature, thicker neck and torso, they have evolved into a fighting machine they are ready for the rutting season. The fallow deer rut is the most important activity in the fallow deer calendar and all other events build towards it. October finds the big males compete for the right to mate with the females by battling with their great antlers. Being the most vocal of the deer species, the fallow buck is grunting and bellowing as means of attracting the female some weeks before they come into season. Griffith, the alpha male, the reigning champion of the Denevo herd for two years running, easily distinguishable by the scarring on the back of his neck, almost certainly a result of a past rut though his rugged looks don't seem to have put off the females. His deep, resonant bark appeals to the does, a true indication of his strength and stamina. The deeper and more frequent the grunts, the fitter the buck, thus the best obvious choice to father their fawns. There's really no comparison between Griffith and his fellow competitors. A distant bellowing in the dense woodland grabs the attention of the relaxing herd. A bassy, sonorous tone. This is a big buck. Llewellyn. A newly matured buck seems to fancy his chances this year and wastes no time in demonstrating his assets. His muscular frame and enormous antlers will prove a tough competitor for any male. Could Llewellyn be the one to knock Griffith off his throne? Ultimately, it will be the decision of the females. 
the does have the final word on who they will mate with. And until then, these large beasts will have to be patient. As the days shorten and the autumn season creeps in, a stunning display of colour engulfs the Denevo landscape. The woodland showcases some of the most magical alterations in the natural world. In a bid to save moisture, the trees cut off the water supply to their leaves that would surely freeze during the harsh winter that is to follow. And so the broad leaves that once supplied food and shelter fall to the ground. It's now late October and the air is thick with the scent of seasoned females. The bucks, rampant with the urge to attract the does, swagger around the rutting stands, making as much noise as possible in a bid to get close to the females. But patience is a virtue. Even Griffith is having a hard time. The tense atmosphere has deemed too much for some. A rut has broken out between two youngsters on the far open field. They may not be big enough to compete for the females. But that does not detract from the force and brutality of a rut between two deer bucks. An older buck sizes up his chances. The battle attracts the attention of many in the herd. An even bigger male intervenes, feeling he has a chance to showcase his dominance. However, when Griffith, the dominant male, decides to break up the battle, they respectfully oblige. Perhaps through sheer fear. Whilst the fallow deer rutting stands are a wealth of activity, a harsh reality looms. A deer cull is due to commence at the park. The following day, the once densely populated rutting fields are now bare. All of the deer hide in the thick woodland, safely camouflaged amongst the autumn foliage. The slightest scent of a human sent them darting in the opposite direction. However, the rutting season must continue. There is a commotion in the trees. A rut has broken out in the woodland. It sounds like an epic battle. It must be the inevitable clash between the two titans, Griffith and Llewellyn. As the ruckus dies down, the unmistakable barks of the mature males echo in the silence. What was the result? Who will reign victorious? Griffith emerges from the woodland. He is injured. Has this been one fight too many for the old champion? Is Llewellyn the new king of the Denevor herd? The does have made their decision. And who is that at the centre of the left?
it's Griffith. Griffith remains the top back for the third year in a row. Despite the injuries he sustained in the altercation with Llewellyn, he continues to reign supreme. The fallow deer mating process can be an arduous task. Despite all the bravado on show, these testosterone-filled beasts must now show patience and gentility towards their female. If he comes on too strong, then she'll simply take one step forward, and that'll be it. It takes several attempts for a male to position himself correctly onto the female. But once he's done so, it's over. Just like that. Unfortunately for Llewellyn and the other bucks, they just don't have that special something. As the birds migrate south for the winter and animals go into hibernation, this harsh season can be a trying time for the fallow deer. They must endure heavy rainfall and freezing conditions culminating in a lack of food resources. The wardens leave buckets of food to replace the shortage of nutrients in the habitat. Unfortunately, some still do not survive. Late March, and as the spring sun shines through the bare deciduous trees hitting the forest floor, it unleashes a lease of life to the ground growing plants. They absorb the sun's rays in a race against time before the leaves grow back on the towering canopy, blocking the sunlight once more. The colourful display attract the newly emerged insects and soon Deneva Park is alive with new life and activity. Perhaps one of these would be the next king of the Deneva herd. Swapping your blood with a louder heart Monsters Whiskey plot was a crowd fratricide Jesus, don't you know that you could have died You should have died Or with the monsters at all Monsters will walk the earth 